Hello everyone and welcome. Today we are going to go over how to create a lamp stack on a Fedora system. So what a lamp stack is, is it's Linux, Apache, MySQL, or Maria database, which is a uh, fork of MySQL, uh, and PHP. So basically it's a web server that you can put on your Fedora system in order to have a full-scale web server running on your computer. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and you can either SU into the super user or you can start using your sudo. In this case I'll be just using sudo. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to run an update. We're going to update our system completely make sure that it's ready to go and I am completely set up so I'm gonna move on to the next step so the next step is you want to actually install your Apache web server so how you're gonna do that in Fedora is you're going to DNF install HTTPD And I forgot my L right there, so we'll try that again. Then it wants to install, so we're going to tell it yes, and it's going to go ahead and install. After it installs, what we have to do is we have to tell the system to enable it so that anytime you boot up it'll automatically start running the web server you have to tell it to start it and then you can check the status if you ever need to check the status of your web server so the way you're gonna do that is you're gonna still using super user or sudo system ctl enable httpd dot service and it did that so then the next command is we want to start it so we enabled it so it's going to automatically start anytime you reboot it but we're not going to reboot the computer so we want to go ahead and start the service so you're just going to do systemctl start httpd.service and now it started if you want to see the status to make sure that it actually is running uh, you're just going to do systemctl status httpd.service and this is what it's going to show and it's going to show right here active running so our web server is running alright so since Fedora has a built-in firewall automatically you have to set up some um, parameters to enable access through the system to HTTP and HTTPS. So what we're going to do is we're going to do sudo firewall-cmd space dash dash permanent space dash dash add service equals HTTP then we're going to do it again for HTTPS after that, we're going to run systemctl reload firewall d. Now what that's doing is that's just reloading all of the firewall configurations that you just did. Now that we've got access through our firewall, we're going to go ahead and check and make sure that it's running. So open your browser of choice and you're going to type in http colon slash slash local host and then hit enter so this shows Fedora test page and it shows Apache right here so this is your web server and your web server is running so now that we know that that's running the next thing we need to do in our LAMP stack is MySQL so Maria database is a fork of MySQL and to my knowledge right now is one of the most popular databasing for MySQL that is out there. So that's what we're going to work with. So you're going to install MariaDB-Server. And if you have a system like mine, mine already has Maria. 
So what we're going to do now is we need to tell the system to enable Maria database, enable the service, then we want to tell it to start the service, and then if we want we can check the status the same way that we check the status of our web server. So now Maria database service is running. So to actually get our MySQL running, we need to do MySQL secure installation. And then what it's going to do is it's going to throw out some information. Um, it's going to ask you for a current password for root, which will just be enter because you haven't used the Maria database yet. Then it asks if you want to set the root password. Say yes, because you do. And then you're going to put in a password. So make sure it's something then that you're going to remember. You're going to re-enter it. And if you like me, then you press the buttons way too fast and you messed it up. So we'll try this again. There we are. Now it's going to ask you several questions. And the answer to all of these is going to be yes. So remove anonymous users. So you want to remove that so nobody can access your database. You want to disallow root login remotely. Remove test databases. Uh, reload privilege tables now. Now the reason you said yes to all of that is just to make it secure again. So it automatically set up with temporary settings and by saying yes to all of that you're clearing out the settings so that nobody could possibly access the database without having the actual uh, root password for it unless you create users for the database. So that right there is what you need for Maria database. Next we're gonna go on to installing PHP. So to install PHP we're just gonna do sudo dnf install php and php common. Now that right there is going to install php on our system. Now there's an extra step that you have to take so that you can set your php to work with databases and that's basically just installing some more PHP. So we're gonna run sudo dnf install php dash mb string php dash mysql php dash gd and then hit enter. And no PHP dash MySQL, so we'll take that out. Okay, we're going to enter. And just to make sure that we have everything we need, we're going to type in one more install. We're going to say PHP dash asterisk. Now this is going to show you every PHP package that you could install. Uh, so PHP Symphony, so this just shows every package that you could have installed. I just wanted to run it real quick to make sure that there wasn't anything that I was missing. And it doesn't look like there is. It looks like the PHP-MySQL that we you used to have to install doesn't have to be installed anymore. All right, so that's that. I'm just gonna go ahead and clear the terminal to get all the junk away. All right, then we're gonna run systemctl restart httpd to restart our web server. So that way the web server will now have MySQL, it'll now have PHP, it'll have everything working. So next, we're going to go ahead and make a temporary file so that we can make sure that PHP and everything is actually running. So you're going to do sudo kate var www.html slash info.php. So what that means is you're going into the var www.html folders from your directory 
and you're creating the file info.php. Now if you don't have Kate installed, you can use Kwrite or any text editing program. So then you're going to type in the code. Oops. Type in the code php php info. You're going to run that method for a uh, function, whatever you want to call it. Depending on what programming languages you're strong in, you call it either a method or a function. So that's all that's going to be in this file. So we're going to save it and then we're going to close it. So now we're going to go ahead and go back to our web browser where we have HTTP localhost we we'll put slash info.php. And once we run that, we'll see that it runs. So <clears throat> now your web server has access to PHP. And these are all the configurations on it. I'm not going to go in depth on any of this, but these are how it is configured. So curl support. Um, yeah, just this is how your PHP on your web server running on your computer is set up. So one thing that I want to go into detail on is whenever you created the info.php file, you had to go into var www.html. So we're going to go ahead and look at that. So I got Dolphin running right here. So in Dolphin, we're going to go ahead and go to our root folder. In our root folder, we have var, and then we have www, and then we have HTML, which is where you saved your info.php. Now, the kicker for this is you don't have access to the HTML without being sudo. So that's not necessarily great if you're going to be doing a lot of work on your web server. So if we we're going to change directory into var slash www. We're going to hit ls-l so we can see the listing of what's in there. So you see the owner is root, the owner is root. So you don't want to change your owner for var or www, but it's okay on your own personal web server to change the permissions to the HTML folder so that you actually can use it. So what we're going to do here is sudo chown, which is change owner. You can change owner to, I'm changing it to Rodney because that's who I am. That's my username, um, HTML. And then what that did is if we run ls-l again, you'll see that now Rodney is the owner. So now what I can do is I can open up a file without being in sudo and I hit file save as and we're going to go to var www html and then we will just save blah.php and it saves just fine. And then whenever you run it on your web server it won't have anything on it because we didn't put anything on it. And that is how you set up a LAMP server.